welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to be trying an Indian uh, recipe called chicken tikka kebab I really want to try the function on my air oven that uses the skewers and um, you know in the air oven so that's gonna be pretty cool so my first time for that first time for uh, cooking Indian dish period um, there's even a spice that a couple spices that I've never even heard of but um, luckily I have spices to um, make that spice myself <laughs> so all right so let's get started um it requires some ginger garlic paste which i do not have that but i do have ginger and i do have garlic so i looked up on how to make um the paste myself and all you have to do is uh, blend ginger garlic with a little bit of oil and salt and you're good to go so i'm going to go ahead and do that now guys all right I'm gonna do um, basically one part of everything. One part ginger, one part um, garlic, and then one part oil. And I'm gonna put it in my food processor and hope that I get what I need, you guys. <laughs> if you plan to do this yourself as well, <clears throat> it's recommended that you cut the ginger into small pieces. So it can be easier to blend. All right, so that's about a tablespoon of garlic, tablespoon of um, ginger. So I'm gonna do a tablespoon of oil. All right, so that didn't exactly work as a paste because of the quantity um, in this big thing here, but at least it combined it well as kind of like minced. <laughs> Instead of a paste, I'll try to mash it down um, um, with this here, the amount that I need. But yeah, I think you need one of those like little mini um, food processors. I've seen them before, but yeah, I don't have that right now. So this is what I have. And I'll just do it, finish it off with this here. I'll take the tablespoon that I need. <clears throat> Just kind of mash it. I think that'll do, guys. I'm gonna leave it at that. And once you have all the ingredients already set and measured out, what you're really gonna be doing is combining everything in a mixing bowl. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing that. I'm gonna put my tablespoon of ginger and garlic paste, homemade. And then next we're going to be um, a half teaspoon of turmeric powder. I don't have a measuring spoon for a half teaspoon, but this is a quarter, so I'm going to do two. One. And two. So now with the uh, gram marsala. I'm gonna to have to do that homemade as well and all it is really is cumin and this is one part cumin and in a quarter part of allspice and the recipe requires a teaspoon of the gram masala so that would be one I'm gonna do it like this one tablespoon one teaspoon of the cumin and then a quarter teaspoon of the allspice and that my friends should be gram masala powder they do sell it you know obviously um, already prepared in the store but I've never looked for it nor seen it because again this is my first time really hearing about it so all right, I'm just gonna put all of it in there. Here we have that. And then one tablespoon and the particular, um, the way they call it is a Kashmiri chili powder. I don't have that. Again, first time hearing about it. So I'm going to do the regular chili powder. And then one 
teaspoon of cumin powder. Some more cumin. All right, so next is gonna be one tablespoon of lemon juice. This is a pretty juicy lemon, so I don't even need my lemon squeezer. It is requiring about one quarter teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna eyeball this. See about it, yeah. And then they don't get a measurement on the salt. So I guess it's salt to taste. So I'm just gonna and I'll probably once I add the chicken put some more. Okay, so now I'm gonna be adding the yogurt. It's uh, supposed to be four tablespoons of thick yogurt or curd. Okay, so that's one, two, three, and four. <coughs> always wanted to do um, a marinade with yogurt like I've seen it and I'm like man I wonder why they do it with yogurt <laughs> so I finally get to try it guys okay so that is the marinade so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this really good together before adding the chicken it smells amazing mm -hmm. Indian food has a lot of flavor so I'm very excited to try this so mix it very well. Look at that nice color it has. With all that ginger and um, chili powder, definitely going to be a bit on the spicier side. Don't mind that at all. Mm -hmm. okay, so I think that's mixed really well. In fact, we're going to be mixing it some more once we add the chicken and coat very well there. All right, so let me go ahead and get that chicken. All right, so the recipe calls for about a little less than a pound and a half of a chicken breast. I think this is perfect here. This is um, a pound and a quarter, so that should do it. All right, so basically cutting these uh, boneless chicken breasts into medium sized pieces so we can put them in the kebab skewers. All right, so I think the best way to do it um, to get those medium sized pieces Especially on this one here, it's just to kind of cut it this way. It looked about right. Maybe a little bit too big, but it yeah, about right. Yeah, this little skinny one, I might just kind of do this <laughs> folding method there. You know what, I feel like maybe I should just cut it like in half, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks too big. All right, I should do it, I should do it. I'm trying to think skewer here. About that should be good. I think our pieces are slightly bigger, but you know what, I'm trying to work here. <laughs> First time doing kebabs. All right. So I think that's good. This one I'm going to cut it with this thinner part here. So then I can fold it. And then this thicker part here, I'm just going to cut it the chicken lengthwise. And then into squares. And I think that'll do it. Alright, so now Time to add it all into the bowl. And combine really well. And now this marinating process can take up to, um, uh, she says minimum 30 minutes to 60 minutes, but it's best results if you do it overnight, of course. Um, 
I'm not sure yet if I want to wait, <laughs> but I am at least going to do an hour, if not two to three hours. But they don't take long at all to cook, so once they've done their marinating, it does not take long at all to cook. So yeah, they're very well coated. I don't see any chicken part area left out. All right, so I'm gonna add more salt, of course. I just wanna make sure that these guys are delicious. Mix it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the refrigerator for the marination process, and I will see you after. All right, so my chicken tikka has been marinated overnight. And I just got back from the grocery store, so I did get um, some bell pepper and some red onions and cut them into medium-sized uh, chunks. It is part of the recipe. I didn't have any, so that's why I didn't put it on. But I'm like, hey, since I'm in the grocery store, let me go ahead and do that now. Um, so I'm just going to add it in. Unfortunately, they're, they're not going to be able to marinate but much. But um, all right, so I'm just going to toss them into the sauce. Thick marinade. Obviously, because of that yogurt, so that uh, flavor really gets like on there on that chicken because it just coats. It doesn't like slide off or anything like that, which is nice. Even so, it coats the marinade coats so well that um, the onions and peppers are getting pretty coated, which is nice. All right, so I think that's pretty good. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them into kebab um, skewers. These are uh, metal skewers because they came with this air oven here. And I'm gonna be doing it on the air oven so I can test that function. So it should be interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure this one out. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in there. All right, so 400, and then it wants uh, to preheat the oven for five minutes and then it'll be there on rotation mode um, for 15, 20 minutes until brown. So that's the recommended time for the air oven. Now for the recipe, um, she put it there for 450 in the regular oven for 10 minutes, and then you turn them over and do it for another 10 to 15 minutes, and also two minutes on broil. So that's, that's the actual recipe. And again, I will put um, her recipe in the description box below so you can check that out. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get working on that. All right, guys, so I was able to successfully assemble six. I did run out of peppers. So this guy right here only has chicken and onions. Doesn't look as tasty as these other ones. Definitely color makes a difference, doesn't it, guys? All right, so what I'm going to do is um, preheat my oven for five minutes at 400, and that's the air oven. And then I'm going to go ahead and, um, while that's happening, assemble it onto this thing right here, <laughs> like so, and put it in this air oven and see what I get. Look how wonderful it looks. I am just hoping that... It is fully cooked. Oh my gosh, look how good they look. Oh my goodness. It looks really nice. So look at that. They definitely have a nice color to it. Okay, so let me go ahead and take the temperature, make sure that this is fully cooked. All right, so got my thermometer here. It's supposed to be 165 to be fully cooked. That one is reading 157. That one's reading 134. It doesn't look like they're cooked, guys, all the way right now. I think it could possibly be, what, another five minutes or something? I'm going to go ahead and put them back in. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back at 400 for another five minutes, because I don't want to overcook them either, so they can be like over like dry or anything, you know what I mean? All right, so find a big piece here. 
reading um I turned off so let's see we'll be on that small just think. All right. I think it's good guys, honestly. taste it. The only thing I don't, I don't like is it looks like a lot of the um, thinner parts of the um, peppers that weren't like super close to the, the chicken definitely like are burnt. <laughs> I don't even think they're edible. But the chicken itself looks pretty good. So it did cook through. Um, again, I had to add a few more minutes because of my thing was not reading the temperature right. I don't know if this is correct or not, but I just want to make sure it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to chicken. So definitely done. I love the color that it got. I'm just hoping that it's like super juicy inside because again, I had to add that five minutes just to make sure it was fully cooked. But um, yeah, so let me go ahead and taste it. All right, taste test. The onions and stuff definitely got like a little too much. <laughs> dry. Maybe that last five minutes wasn't even needed, so I blame that on this. <laughs> I don't know if it was taking correct temperature. But, mmm, the flavor is like, mm. I can taste the cumin. I think I could even taste like the allspice, um, the lemon. I can feel the yogurt. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. That was so good. Honestly, I'm gonna do this recipe again one day and I'm gonna do it on the regular oven. Because <laughs> I don't know if it, if the air oven itself made it like um like dry like that. Or oh, that piece of onion was actually pretty good. It's not burnt. It's the ones that were um not like close to the chicken turned out to be like super burnt like burnt chips but yeah it's just so flavorful like wow yeah i think it was good that um the first like literally 20 minutes and i put it in for another five minutes because of this but mm -hmm. wow mm. Mm. that's tasty a bit dry, but definitely worth doing, guys. That's a lot of flavor. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Till next time.